Welcome to another Blueprint IoT video. This video is part of a video series about Node-RED and today we're going to take a look on the change node. So before we start and trying to use it, let's take a look on the options we have. First of all, we can give it a name again, like every other node as well, and then we can set some routes. As a default option, we can set the message payload or of course every other subsection of the object to a specific value. This value can of course be a string or a number or every other data type that's available in Node-RED. So in this use case, it really doesn't matter at all what type of input you have. No matter what it is, you can set it to a certain payload and a certain data type, even if the data type differs from the input. So I will give you a quick example. Let's say we want to have hello world as an output for the payload, no matter what's the input. So we're going to check it with, with a debug node going to put in an inject node and we just inject the timestamp that's fine so we should see hello world at the other end so here we go hello world working perfectly fine and just to make sure that there's really nothing else so the timestamp is really not there anymore we just switch to the whole object in the debug mode and we try it again so let's take a look on the whole object you can see the message ID, of course, topic is empty, the payload is hello world, the timestamp is totally gone. So we really reset the payload to hello world. So this was the first option. Let's take a look on the second option. We can actually change a certain part of the payload to a new value. So a quick use case would be to replace hello by bye. This could be an answer, a default answer for a chatbot, you know, in case someone is typing you hello world or like hello there or whatever, you can just type in bye or you of course could also replace it with hello out there instead of hello there. So you can have a lot of changes here depending on your use case. So here we go. Hello world was injected and bye world was outputted. So change node is pretty useful also in case you're working with values, numbers, well, sensor values, whatever. It can come in super handy also for chatbots or easy ask and response start kind of stuff or Q&A. So that's something you can do here. So the next option is delete. So you can just delete the whole payload or a part of the payload. Of course, you could delete a part of the object, whatever payload.test so you can delete parts of the object quite precisely. This can come in useful in case you have a sensor that's measuring a combined value like temperature and humidity and air pressure for example. You could just delete the air pressure and the humidity in case you only want to work with the temperature. So this can be very useful. In this case it would probably be something like payload.temperature and then there will be maybe payload.humidity. So in this case, you could just delete the parts you don't need. In this use case, I just explained, you would have to delete, for example, the temperature and the pressure to get to work with the humidity only. So you can use this add button here and you can just add as many roots as you want. So in this case, it would be another delete. So delete payload.pressure and then you can go on only with the payload.humidity. So that's really nice in case you have to sort some readings from combined sensors. Of course, you can just copy and paste the same thing to have the temperature reading only, the pressure reading only, and the humidity reading only. So you have three times the change node deleting all the stuff you don't need and then having a clear single measurement. Of course, you can use this multi-rule kind of thing with change and set as well. So you can set the payload to a certain value. You can change one part or you can change several things to other things. So there's a bunch you can do. So in case you have like any kind of welcome message from a chatbot, you could set hello to hello there. You could change bye for see you later, whatever you want. So you can have a bunch of rules because you never know what exactly the customer or the user will type in. But let's go back to one rule only and check out the last option, which is move. So you could move a specific subsection of the object into another subsection. This is also very useful because sometimes you get a sensor reading for some reason outputting your value in kind of a tricky path like here. 
payload.temp and you want to just have it in the payload. So you can just get it into the payload. So let's give this one a try. So let's set here payload.temp and let's have it as a number since it's a sensor reading. So let's give it a try. Here we go. And there's the result. We have payload is five. And before you can double check, it was in payload.temp, which was moved to message.payload. So rather than a switch node, the change node is not used to direct information, more to modify information, which is really more often the case than you think. These use cases are rather this typical big use cases like, okay, I have a sensor value above or below a value and have to redirect the, the reading. Those change node use cases are much more individual and really depends on what you're doing, what sensors you're using or what inputs you have for databases, whatever in which data format you're reading something. So there are many, many reasons that you have an input and you cannot really work with it in the way you want and you have to change it or move it to a different part of the object. So it's really quite common that you need the change node, even though it may seem like there's no value creation for your logic array, but it's really super useful and helps you, especially in kind of situations where you're stuck and don't know how to figure this out. And then just remember the change node could give you a hand to bring your data into the right format or into the right arrangement. So this is it for today's video. In case you wondered about all those navigation things and the inject node, the debug node and the switch node, check out the previous videos. There's a single video for each node where all the details are explained separately. So thanks for watching. Make sure to be subscribed for more content like this and see you next time.